Hi, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity. It is Saturday, March 19th. I have an update here for you. Well, the stock markets of the world have returned uh, not just an okay month, but in the Dow Jones case, the best month ever in all of its history. This includes spectacular months of rebounds from depths of depressions and, and when we were lifting out of extraordinary recessions and even at the height of bull market mania when things were seemingly going super well. So how do we account for the best month of returns ever in the Dow's history? Well, you can't do it on the basis of fundamentals. You can't do it on the basis of things like corporate earnings or revenues or some dramatic shift in the world economic status. What you can do is you can note that the world's central bankers got together a while ago, the G20 got together, uh, what is now being known and talked about as the Shanghai Accord, where, where the central banks looked at the worst start uh, to 2016, uh, that worst start in quite a while, uh, that bad start to the year, and said, gosh, we have to do something. And so they did. They got together and they engineered uh, what looks like a very, not just a slightly dramatic, but the most dramatic rebound in market conditions in all of history. Now, here's the fun part that you will want to know about this. This was the banks, the central banks, coming together in secret to uh, boost asset markets. Now, here's the fun part in this story, of course. Uh, did they tell you about it? No. Did they tell me about it? No. But here's the fun part. Um, Jamie Dimon, of, of, uh, uh, the CEO of JP Morgan, came out and bought a whole bunch, $26 million worth of, this, of his company stock, of JP Morgan stock, right at the lows, right, right as this secret deal was being hammered out. Uh, Goldman Sachs decided to go very, very long uh, emerging market debt, killer move, big contrarian bet, right at the right time, uh, sweeping all of these uh, uh, emerging market bonds, which were deeply distressed because the dollar was going up, and uh, all of a sudden, the dollar starts going down, Cuts, gets, uh, catches all sorts of foreign currency traders off guard because, of course, you can't really account for these moves with normal trading. What's happening here is the central banks are colluding to keep the asset markets propped, but the big banks, you might as well just follow what they're doing because they are just front-running, following along. They're on the inside. They're getting this information. But here, let me follow. The, let's take this all the way to the end. Here's what's happening. The already super wealthy, the central banks are the guardians of the super wealthy. They are the guardians of the elite, the guardians of the big banks. And the big banks are out there busy front running, whether they're buying their own stock shares or emerging market bonds, they're just making out like bandits for their customers. Here's how good JP Morgan's doing. I just read in the Wall Street Journal this morning that JP Morgan has said, you know what? We're only going to be accepting clients who have private clients who have at least $10 million in assets. It used to just be $5 million in assets, but eh, we don't need those chumps anymore. They're only working with the $10 million in up crowd now. Why? Because that's the people who are getting all this money. So the central banks try and pretend like what they're doing is rescuing markets for your purposes and good. They're helping the crowd out. They're helping people out, but they're not. They're really helping out the $10 million and over crowd right now. This is People with printing presses helping them and their friends out. It is the gro most grotesque self-interest on record. They don't know how to stop. They don't know how to do anything different than keep the gravy train for themselves running. Now, here's where we connect this dot. The GOP right now is very confused. Where did this guy Trump come from? What's going on? How is he making such headlines and, and, and headway? Well, very simply, he's tapping in to the grotesque anger that exists out there among everybody who isn't in the 10 million and over crowd who are getting absolutely shafted by these same actions that these central banks are self-justifying as necessary. We must save the world. We have to save markets. Whatever their rationalization is, I'm sure it works for them. It makes a lot of sense in their little cloistered world they live in, but what they're missing is that the anger is growing. The disconnection, the dispossession, and the disassociation that the rest of us feel from their actions, it, that gulf is just getting wider and wider and wider. And this really, I think, largely explains some of the political landscape we're seeing, which itself is just a social reflection. 
which the elite seem to be dangerously out of touch with. And oh, by the way, if this story sounds familiar, you might have heard it uh, in Rome at one point in time, or in France at the end of the monarchy, or at these great turning points in history, when for whatever reason, it must just be some human, human trait, the elites get off in their own little bubble world of thought and self-referential thinking, and somehow they just lose touch with what's really going on in the world. So we can open another page of the newspaper and say, wow, February, hottest month on record for the world by a long shot, right? Maybe some El Nino effects in that, of course, but the hottest on record. Wait a minute, 30% of the phytoplankton is missing in the Indian Ocean. On and on and on, we see all these signs of distress and all our elites can think to do is to continue to pad their own bank accounts. If you are not angry at this at this point in time, you should be. If you're not angry, you haven't been paying attention because this is, anytime humans are confronted with, with massive injustice, we get angry. Uh, so do capuchin monkeys when they get grapes to their, to their uh, Grapes are fed to, to their colleagues and they get cucumbers, right? Uh, uh, I've posted that video before, very fun. But it's a primate thing. Injustice leads to anger and it breeds resentment. That's what's being done now. Hello, central bankers, please open your eyes. Go talk to some people in the streets. What you are doing is not helping. It is making things worse. And we're watching. Everybody's starting to notice this. You can't hide it anymore. So I wish I had more upbeat things to say. I should be saying, woohoo, best stock return in, in uh, you know, ever. That must mean the world's about to turn into rainbows and unicorns, but that's not what I'm saying here. I'm sticking to the story I've been telling all along. You print up fake money and try to create the illusion of prosperity for everybody, but what you do is you create the reality of prosperity for a very tiny minority, and you create absolute hardship for everybody else. It's not that hard of a story to understand. So with that, there's my anger for the day. Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. If you want to subscribe to this channel, do it here. Come to Peak Prosperity. Look at the things that we're talking about. Join the conversation. Love to see you there. And of course, we have our seminar at Rowe, Massachusetts coming up April 14th to 17th. We're going from Thursday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're adding one day this year. It's a great seminar. Just a few places left if you want to come to that and talk about things like this and how you can be resilient and prepared. So with that, until next time, I'll see you then.